Okay, I think we've got it set up now. Lupa Shaving Channel. Cool. I want to say that that is probably Lam it is probably Mr. Brom. Brom, can you see everything okay on these? It's going to take me about 10 seconds to get the answer from you, but yeah. Just want to make sure you can see everything. Face uh, YouTube has changed a lot of their settings on these, so I'm verifying everything's good, great, and hunky-dory. Okay, cool. If you can see it all, uh, basically what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be making a solar flare. And I'm going to pretty much go from beginning to end. This particular solar flare uh, is from a foreign gentleman by the name of Evo. And he's in the Netherlands. So I'm going to be shaping and making this one from zero to hero. And that way everybody can kind of see a general idea. And he wants it in the model of a Frisco. Uh, hey, what's up, Craig? Hey, Danny. He wants it in the model of a Frisco. So what I'm going to basically be doing right now is I'm going to be laying this thing out so that I got a better idea of exactly what I want on this. And I'm going to take this to here and to here. So that way I can get all of this. This purple is coming up in through this blue, through these stars. And I want to keep as much of that as I possibly can. So... I will be making this Frisco in this way. That way we're all running at the same page. So, in doing this, I'm going to have to cut this off here so that we've got a good layout on it. So let's go ahead and get this cut off real quick. I promised a couple of guys that I would come in here and do this video so that way we have a good seeing of how these are actually made. These solar flares do take some uh, additional equipment. Let me check this real quick. Yeah, I should be fine here. I want to mark this so I know where it is, so I can visually see it. Excellent. Get some stabilizing going on here. That way we don't have any problems at throwing back at you. All I'm doing right now is cutting this end off so that way I left a little bit on it because it's jumping that way I can break it off instead of it throwing off at it. Now, we have this. One of the things that I want to do is right now, this end is not perfectly level, okay? And if we want to fix that, <clears throat> definitely. I can see it from here. It's not perfectly level. As it's spinning, I can see a little bit of wobble. And I don't want that wobble there. So, 
if we're going to fix it, let's make it really flat. Take this down to about a thousand RPMs. Now, we have a good, strong, flat end. This is exactly what we want. That way, it's going to be like it's supposed to be. And since we're here, let's go ahead and drill out a knot hole base. Now, this is a 26 mil. We're going to be drilling it out for a 26 mil knot. And to get the right loft on this, we really need to be with the type of, of, of hair knot that's going to be used, which is going to be a two band fan. I need to be around 15, 15 and a half mils. So that's 15 mils deep. A lot of these shavings. I like to play a little game and see just how close I can get to 15, 15.5. 15.34. Okay. I can live with 15.34. One of the things that I want to do is I'm going to be putting a pretty dense knot in this. And when you feel this right here, where it's been drilled out, it's really sharp right there. And what happens is, is when you put a very compact knot in there and it starts to splay out, that sharpness right there can actually come in here and cut your hairs. So let's take care of that real quick. Now we've got a chafer on there. And since we're already here, we're not going to get another chance to sand this until after the fact. So let's just go ahead and knock this out. Now for guys that are no sandpaper very well, what I'm doing is I'm just basically sanding this out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some cross sanding because it's all been going in a circle. So now we're gonna do some cross sanding to sand out the sand marks that we just made. That's gonna cross sand that. So now let's get this chafer that we just made. And now we're gonna come here, we're gonna sand out the, the marks that we just did on a cross sand. That way, when you actually polish this, it's going to be like it's supposed to be. Okay. Call it. Let's put a good old collet in there. Excellent. Let me go over and read some of these comments real quick. Um, Danny Matthews. Hey, Danny. Craig's there. Danny, Danny. Evo, what's up, big guy? This Evo, this is yours. Brother Brahms asked me, said, hey, Gary, yeah. Make sure you do a video. I apologize I haven't done as many videos as I'm, as I'm supposed to. I get a lot of requests for them. There's uh, so many guys out there that are making these, and uh, I'm telling you, man, they're doing a fantastic job. And uh, I've got about four mentors, five mentors right now that I'm working with, and I've been doing a lot of those for them. And I'm currently working on a drop that's coming up this Valentine's.
boy, this is, you know, this is going to be absolutely beautiful. Let me bring this in just a little bit closer. One more. There we go. This is going to be absolutely beautiful because if you can see this line right here, that is the purple and the copper that's going into this blue. So when I shape this, it's going to be very, very obvious. I really enjoy making these solar flares. Uh, it's not the funnest thing in the world to make. In the, in the pouring side of it, but there we go. Now let's lock it into place. So now let's turn it up. Let's make sure I have no slipping. And we got just a tad. So let's fix that. Boom. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna switch out my tool rest. I want this perfectly center of the blank. Beautiful, right there. Okay. I see that, Brom. Evo's in the house. All right, guys, let's shape this thing. Now, if you, you can't see it from where I'm at, but I can see that this particular mold, this, this particular unit, has a little bit of a slant on this end, so it's a little thicker here than it is here. Um, I'm going to basically give it a, a, a complete shape and the model that is being used is going to be used is called the Frisco. This is a Frisco model and that's what the customer is wanting. So I'm going to be making it to this one instead of this one. This is a classic. This is a Frisco. Uh, the Frisco is a little bit longer, just a tad bit, maybe two millimeters, three millimeters but it doesn't have the uh, lip catch that the uh, Classic does. So I'm gonna shape this real quick. I can, I'm reading your questions over here, so anybody's got questions, I can pretty much see them. I want this thing perfectly round before we start anything. I'm not digging into it very deep because there's a lot of room and a lot of space that I want to get into on these. And now I've got it perfectly round. Okay, let's mark this thing off real quick. Okay, this is my outline. This is where the end of the knothole base is gonna to come to. This is my low point of my thumb. This is the crown of the actual handle, and this is my cutoff. So if you can tell from the cutoff, I'm taking and using as much of this blue in here as I possibly can. So these dark marks are never gonna be seen here. So I'm gonna make it to where it's a little bit easier for me to see what I'm doing.
Well, I got really close on that end, didn't I? Okay. Normally, I shape the knot hole base first. On a Frisco, I don't. I start on the center section where the thumb is, and then I make the head, and then from there, I come back on this. That way, I'm not taking any material away from it. So, I'm going to take this all the way up to the line here. The Frisco has a little bit larger head on it than my Classic, but in my terminology, I am creating the hip line right now. So now let's shape the head.
Okay, so now, a little bit of measuring. Perfect. I may want to take just a little bit off here. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Uh, yo, here comes the magic round one. Magic, okay. Marlos, good job. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and cut the end off completely. really close on there so now I'm going to adjust the heads on the back end of it you got to make sure that this is perfectly centered and it's not if it's not perfectly centered, you'll never get it right. Okay, I can live with this. Now, on these type, I build a lens, like a reverse lens in this so that light can go through this very easily. Beautiful. Okay, Evo, this is your shape, my man. This is a Frisco. So, this will pretty much be the shape on it. And now it's sanding time.
I'm watching your notes, bro. Thank you for the interpret. I appreciate it. Sometimes I'm so focused on what I'm doing, I forget what I'm doing. Just in case anybody that's watching, I think I've got about 15 people watching right now. This gentleman down here is called uh, Evo. Uh, he's from the Netherlands. This is for him. Uh, if you guys have ever noticed my banner signs for drops and that kind of stuff, those really cool ones that we've been using for the last couple of months. This is the gentleman that actually makes them. And Evo, I'm going to say thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you to Brom for introducing us. All right, right now I'm, I'm sanding this at a 320 grit. That way if there's any marks that I've left on this I can sand them out so when you see me touching these yes I know what I'm doing don't do this at home uh, I'm feeling for any kind of marks there's one right there that could have been left over from turning it and all I'm doing right now is sanding it out still right there All right, so now we're gonna cross sand what we just sanded. And the 320 grit, it's not that aggressive of a grit on wood, okay? It's not. But on resin, it's a very aggressive. Very, very aggressive on resin. There's sometimes I even have to go down to 250 grit, but 320 is pretty much where I start at. And you don't want any leftover lines, circle lines, on these in any way. Because they will show up in the least expecting times. Oh, this is cool. It's got a complete see-through here. Right there. And these are ghost colors here in the copper. And those are transparent. So I'm making sure that at 320, I've got all of this sanded off, sanded out. That way that there's no problems when you get to that point of, I need to really do some fine polishing on it. Okay, now let's go to 400. Once we go past 400, you guys are going to see a yellow rag coming out because I take all this goop glam off of it in between grits this just takes a real quick cross sand
400 is not that strong and it doesn't leave that many marks like the 320 does. All right. Now let's go to 600. Just so you guys know, um, yes, I am known a lot for my hybrids. I get that. And I have a bunch of them that I'm working on right now. They'll be in the drop. But as myself personally, I am doing everything I can to improve something of mine, and that is my resin technique on pure resins. Uh, I take it very seriously and a lot of the guys that know me I'm a perfectionist sorry and uh, I want to make sure that what I'm bringing to the market for you guys is perfection and I hate close so I'm working on about four different new techniques that are not even being used. And the solar flare and the layered textures, those are things that most people haven't even thought of doing yet. And I'm, I'm working on it to get it to a next level. Because in my opinion, if you're not moving forward, you're not moving, you know? All right, I'm on 800 grit right now. Well, that's got a good feel to it. Evo, you're going to get a nice handle here, brother. Let's go to a thousand. At a thousand, I'm going to do some cross sanding. You always want to keep your sandpaper wet because I'm turning right now at 1300 RPMs and that can heat up resin really fast. So the wetter you keep it, the cooler it will make it as it's sanding. Let me read some of these real quick. Uh, Evo, wonderful. Evo, yes. Evo, my pleasure. Been happy to do so. Evo, can't wait. Yeah. All right, so now let's go to 1500. There she is. Here's my 2000.
Once you leave 2000, you are now going more into polishing, honing, rather than sanding. So you want to be sure and keep your handle clean of any excess. So now, let me pull all these out. Alright, so now I'm going to go to gray, to green, to brown, to turquoise, to purple, to blue, to pink. These are honing, polishing pads. Right now, the one I've got in my hand is 2400 grit. This is 2400. It's actually one of the rougher ones, but if you want it sanded and you want it polished the way it's supposed to be, that's what you've got to go for. Resin can either look really good or really bad. This purple is 6,000 grit. The one I've got in my hand is 6,000 grit right now. Now we're going to 8,000. And the last one is 12,000 grit. All right, guys, before we even get started on the final polishing, let's pull this up where you guys can see the end result. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. <clears throat> if we've got any ladies in the house, you guys know what these things are. We're going to start entering into phase two of the polishing on it.
what we're doing is we're taking this from a level six in shiny polishness to a seven, eight, and then we'll take it to 10, and then we'll take it to 12. Can you guys see this? Okay. Well, just when you thought we were done, we're not. Now, all this work that we've done has been on the outer ring, okay? It's great. This still, this right here still looks poopy. So we gotta fix this, and then we gotta make sure that there's no leftover scratches anywhere on this thing. So, I just cleaned those decks, so let's protect them. Okay. All that sanding that we did earlier on makes it so much easier.
sections, baby. All right. Let me find out where it's at. There you go. I want to show you guys what Evo is going to be getting. That way. Now, that purple is coming all the way up inside of this. And I wanted as much of that blue in there as I could possibly get. This particular product that's inside of this is called Stardust. And I wanted an enormous amount of it in it. I saw a little left over there. Perfect. Okay. Let me come over and read some comments. Beautiful brush. Look at that puppy. I, uh, Van, you can hear me applauding. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, let me just pull this out just a little bit. Excellent. All right, guys. This is a solar flare. And it is in a model of Frisco. And I did make this specifically for uh, Evo, who's here. Hey, Joel. And this one will be going to him. Now, on the drop that's coming up, I have three more of these solar flares that are going to be showing up. Uh, I've also got a couple of really cool looking handles that are going to be there as well. Um... Uh, Just in case anybody wanted to take a sneak peek. I just got done with a couple. And that way you guys can kind of get a better idea. This is going to be a Northern Lights. That will be there. <clears throat> if you guys remember from the last drop, the one that had all the clouds, here's one. I've got a purple classic and a blue with green copper. And this will be a signature series. It is an orange and yellow on coffee. And the orange and the yellow are intermixed with yellow snow on it. That will be in it. And there will be a bunch more. So I'm uh, just kind of letting you guys know what's coming up. Uh, so there will be three solar flares. Uh, a couple of uh, layered textures. Or swirls. Uh, a northern lights. A cloud. Classic. Classic. And a signature. So. Those will be out in the drop for Valentine's, and I've got the banner up, and it's already there. So if anybody wants to take a peek, drop by on the 12th at the Mojo site, and they will be there. So guys, I appreciate y'all coming and watching. Evo, I hope that you really like what you're going to get. Uh, I'll be shipping it off probably in the next two days after I get the logo put on it, and it will be coming to you. All right, guys, y'all take care.